Welcome to this video. Today we're going to be looking at bony injuries. And I'm pleased to say that a friend and colleague, Jim Harrison, who is an orthopaedic specialist, has come along to help us consider this subject today. Thanks for coming across, Jim. First question I'd like to ask is, what do we mean by the term fracture? Well, fracture is quite a simple description, meaning a break in the continuity of a bone. Okay. And, and what can cause a fracture? A fracture is caused by an insult to that bone. Now, that may be a one-off insult when a child falls off his bike and hits the ground. Uh, that delivers energy to the bone, which may cause a fracture. Or it may be a repeated insult over time, as with the marathon runner who's running 100 miles in a week and uh, develops a stress fracture from the continued impact over many uh, cycles of running on the ground. Okay. Is there any other sorts of fractures? We've got stress fractures, traumatic fractures? Yes, we can describe different types of fractures. Another type to put in would be a pathological fracture. And by this we mean a fracture through abnormal bone. And normally we understand by that that the energy involved is less than you would expect that would be required to cause a fracture. So, for example, there may be a weakness in the bone caused by previous infection, by a tumour, by a bone cyst, or by something like that. So it sounds like there's quite a wide variety of possible fractures that, 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 that can present. How, how do we sort of describe fractures? How do we classify them? Yes, we have lots of descriptive terms. I'd like to illustrate the way that we describe them um, by drawing on a on a diagram, the different types. What I'd like to show you now is how we describe fractures. And I'm going to demonstrate this on a picture and try and draw it as we go along. So if we can imagine that this picture here uh, shows a representative femur. I know it's not exactly how a femur looks. And then we'll draw some different uh, descriptive types of fracture. The first and simplest description is that of a transverse fracture. And you can see that this runs roughly at 90 degrees to the line of axis of the bone. So if we draw an axis along the bone and the axis of the fracture itself, then they form a right angle that is a transverse fracture. The next description is of an oblique fracture, an oblique fracture, a fracture at an angle, if you like. Rather than being 90 degrees, we're now forming an angle between the axis of the bone and the axis of the fracture. Now the next one is much harder to draw and it's taxing my drawing skills. But this is one with a rotational alignment forming a spiral fracture, a spiral fracture. And it's caused by a rotational force. For example, if a parent picks a child up by the foot and twists the child round, then the force of the body acting through the, f the femur in a twisting manner forms a, a spiral fracture. That's a rotational force. 
And finally, a fracture with lots of bits to it. That's called a comminuted fracture. A comminuted fracture. We sometimes use the term multi-fragmentary, many pieces. Uh, but comminuted is the more commonly used term for that fracture. And those are the different descriptive terms that I'd like to show to you. We're now looking at the radiograph. It's actually of the left femur of a child. And this child was hit by a car. And the bumper of the car hit the side of the leg with a direct blow. And it's produced a transverse fracture in the shaft of the bone. This radiograph again shows a, a child's bone, which we know from the presence of the epiphyseal line or growth plate in the distal tibia and proximal to that we can see a transverse fracture. It is slightly displaced as you can see from the continuity of the lines and there's also a fracture of the fibula almost at the same level. The other interesting observation is that this limb is in a plaster cast and that can be quite clearly seen around the edge of the uh, limb in, on the x-ray appearance. We're looking at the right distal femur and knee joint of a 23-year-old man who was riding his motorbike at about 60 miles an hour when a car pulled out in front of him. And he came off at high speed, transmitting great energy through the fracture and that's resulted in a very comminuted fracture. There are many pieces in the distal femur. And also we notice a lot of changes in the soft tissue from hemorrhage and also from the fact that this was an open fracture. The bone pierced the skin and uh, air has got in around the fracture site. So it's a comminuted and open or compound fracture. So you mentioned uh, an open uh, fracture there, Jim. What, 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 what does that term mean? An open fracture is, is one that communicates with the outside world, normally with the air itself, although there is another situation where it may uh, communicate with the bowel, for example. A pelvic fracture can be open into the bowel. And this means that there's a source of contamination and bacteria can get into the fracture and cause infection. And that's critically important in the treatment of the fracture. Is the term com does the term compound mean the same thing as open? Compound and open do mean the same thing. Uh, we do prefer to use the term open now because the uh, converse to compound was, was simple and because a, a fracture is closed doesn't necessarily mean that it's a simple fracture because some closed fractures are uh, very severe as well. So a fracture may be open or it may be closed. So open and closed are the modern terms. What about, what about children? Are fractures in children the same, the same as in adults? Children's bones are different. And uh, growing bone begins with cartilage. And then the uh, ossification, the mineralization is laid down later. And so children's bones are more supple and bendy. Sometimes we get a fracture which is just a, a plastic deformation. That's to say that the bone bends but doesn't truly break. The next level from that is a green stick fracture. And I'd like to demonstrate that to you, John. If we take a, a young branch or, uh, from a tree and try to break it, 